Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Tell Xavier. Go fuck yourself. Hello ladies and gents, this is Michael Burhan here uh, for another edition of Movie File. This is actually episode one, believe it or not. Um, I'm here today with uh, a man who should need no introduction. Actually he does because this is his first episode. Uh, Mr. Oliver Hughes, who's been on I Got Gameplay and various other projects of mine. Um, so, And he's also a co-director on a project that we're currently, a film project we're currently uh, trying to get issued to Cannes. Now... Let, let's basically the movie we're talking about today is the very very awesome uh x-men days of future past and the reason why we're talking about it is because we've both seen the movie we both agree that it's freaking awesome but it's not without its flaws that's the one thing we need to talk about now um but what first we're basically going to go into the whole structure of the story here now the story starts uh with where it's supposed to have start um sort of left off from the wolverine uh, from where Wolverine himself and, and like Professor Xavier and everybody are nowhere to be seen. You, you're seeing uh, the the usual regulars from X3. You've got Colossus. Uh, you've got Kitty Pride. You have Bishop, who who's just joined in without yeah. no story or background. Blink. Blink. You <clears throat> and and these things which we assume are Sentinels yeah. are going around like destroying mutants. They are Sentinels. They call them Sentinels. Yeah, well, they call them Sentinels. <laughs> Uh, we assume they are because uh, the fact is, you know, they, they've given no backstory to it as of yet. It's kind of gone in. It's full kind of uh, action orientated, so to speak. You know, the Sentinels yeah. are coming in. They're crushing everybody. And um, what they're doing, there's there's a hu- every human that sympathizes with the, the, the mutants, so to speak, will get put into prison yeah. camps. The mutants themselves are put into prison camps and they're all just basically decimated and eliminated. Yeah, and even um, humans... That um, have the DNA that could give birth to mutants are also eliminated. Yes. So if you have the potential to have mutants in your family, you are rounded up with the mutants as well. And that's the big thing here. Now, uh, with that being said, these we assume are the only team of mutants alive that are basically uh, a sort of resistance, so to speak. Yeah, it's like in a Tibet uh, temple somewhere yeah. in the middle of, not literally in the middle of the mountains, away from. Well, at Everywhere. first it's on the ground. It's uh, they they do it first on the ground, and you see each one of these guys getting killed. Iceman, his head crushed. Yeah, uh, that, that's the beauty of it. You you actually see all of the uh, yeah. X Men winning. Iceman freezes a Sentinel. Nice. Um, Sunspot, um, who's a very very polarizing character. You don't, they don't mention him by name, but he's a very yeah. polarizing character. He's going in. You can see the the nice CGI and effects they're using. Yeah, but, it looks a him. lot better, don't doesn't it? It, it? Before, it used to look like something that you could do in uh, basically Adobe, in a sense, in terms of the effects. Uh, but it looks really, really good yeah. in this. And Colossus is just beating the crap out. I mean, these these yeah. Sentinels aren't the ones that we're all used to. They're not the... 20 foot tall Big bright purple, blue yeah. like giant iron men basically yeah uh, with the thrusters on the hands and feet um, these, these are like 8 foot tall kind of scaly and the brilliant thing about them is like Colossus is just destroying one with his fist he's just smashing it up and it changes it basically adapts to be made of adamantium like he is yeah. so then it's a one on one it's like and basically this this hasn't been explained as of yet but it does get explained eventually now um, all these guys are trying to put stops in at Sentinels while Kitty and Bishop goes into this enclosed area. They go into the enclosed area which sits a sort of a, a, a stone bed that Bishop lays on and Kitty kind of uses her powers these additional powers that they've explained in the trailers but there's no explanation as to how, why she, or how she has yeah, them. Yeah that really, that really really confused me why, yeah. why I can walk through walls so now I can I can just... send your brain back in time a few seconds. <laughs> Now that then that's the thing she does. She basically uh, uses these powers to send his brain back in time about five seconds before with, the attack happens to his own body, yeah. so he can then tell them sentinels are coming, so they can be gone before the sentinels arrive. So that technically they were never there. Yes, it's a paradox, and thus the situation doesn't happen uh, again. So they they do that, and then eventually uh, after that happens, we see. Um, Charles Xavier who unexplained is in a new body uh, of a comatose person but yet we see him sitting in a wheelchair yeah, uh, I thought we'd pick pa- someone who, who could walk at least yeah no he's Patrick Stewart again which is 
to be honest, I mean, the end of X3, well, in X3, he gets decimated. Um, but I he do. throws his mind. If you if you look at the end of the trailers, there's this sort of clip where um, the guy in the coma in the third film basically is Xavier. Yeah. But it's a random actor who can clearly walk and stuff. Um, but then they use Patrick Stewart again. Yeah. In a wheelchair. So yeah, they, like, they don't explain it. But in the end, again, you can use your own kind of imagination with it yeah. to the fact that Charles Xavier can project his own image. So we, we can say that's, that's that. And the same thing goes for Kitty. But why would he project himself in a wheelchair? I, I, he, he just, I could project myself. You all maybe, know me as Charles. Maybe it's a familiar way of everybody sees him. Like They, they know him, they identify him, and that's the way he sees himself. Fucking wheelchair! And also you've got like Kitty um, and her ability... Again, you know, Brian Singer originally started this whole thing when he was writing the X Men comics mm. uh, back when he worked for Marvel. Um, at one point, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Brian Singer. Sorry, it was um, uh, the gentleman who did the Avengers uh, movie and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Josh Whedon, yeah, um, who did the the X comic basically, where he wrote uh, a couple of stories of this new all new X Men, um, where. He talked about the the X gene further mutating, so people would get further abilities. Like Emma Frost turned into this big, uh, solid diamond shaped thing. She you know, anyway, didn't she? Um, well, no, that that was the thing. Diamond skin. Yeah, that was the thing. That that was her next mutation. Beast turned into a more feral like thing, and he and he became more sort of a uh, cat like looking. So we could assume, and again, this is an assumption, and yes, I know whoever assumes, you can make an ass out of you and me in a sense, but it, the the whole assumption here is... Magic. That, no, that, that <laughs> she's uh, you, on the next stage of genetic mutation, which they'll probably will write in Charles, the books. Xavier hasn't really, he's like, I can control people's minds and that's it. Yeah, but he's the most powerful mutant on the planet. At yeah, one point he was. He's, his mind got so powerful... He ended up becoming onslaught, but we'll, we can go into that when we do a comic book thing. We're, we're talking yeah. about the movie here, yeah. so um, he comes in with Wolverine, with Magneto uh, in tow. Basically, from the conversation they had at the end of the Wolverine, uh, spawns into this. There's a few errors in this. One, uh, when he met them at the airport, this shit wasn't going down. So it means that they've this this has happened probably about fifteen twenty years after that conversation took yeah. place. So they knew what was going to happen. And they were ready for it. Um, you know, you, you, do, you do see a nice little cutaway scene of Rogue as well as she, um, like, dusts away sort of an X-Man uniform before she's killed by a Sentinel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is one of the things at the beginning when the Sentinels... Yeah, where they, where they came in and basically yeah, they uh, killed... decimate everybody. Yeah, because like we were saying, with Iceman, for instance, uh, he's the only one who dies at the beginning because... He's winning. He's no, no, but they they all do. Like uh, Colossus is getting destroyed, and no, then Sunspot is. But you, yeah. you see, clearly, he's the only one who's clearly getting destroyed. Yeah, because he, that's what I mean. The Sentinels have the ability. Well, you see them; they adapt. You're not yeah. sure why, but they adapt. So, I when Iceman's freezing them, they turn to fire. So yeah. they're able to counter him. Grabs him around the throat. Um, he tries his best to turn into pure ice, and they just snap his neck. Yeah, and, and the great thing about it as well is. Charles Xavier explains all of this. He explains what happened, and we leave off from basically um, the uh, X Men movie that was the prequel movie with James McAvoy, uh, which was uh, X Men um, First Class. Yeah. So we we leave off from there. He explains basically the fact that it was the events that led from him with Mystique uh, and also with Magneto, uh, played by Michael Fassbender, who. Um, they broke away from one another and that Wolverine needs to actually find him well it was Xavier needs to find his other counterpart and, and, and put everything back together you know bring yeah. the whole the whole team back there, again there's a couple of continuity errors one um, they, they talk about Trask uh, they, they talk about the fact that the guy uh, invented the Sentinels in, in a sense um, but they don't talk about the fact why she's hunting the guy down um, secondly in all, the time that she finds him, um, it should have basically been after X3, but it still looked like she was in the, the era of first class. She was in the 60s when she was found um, killed after she kills him mm. and has her body sort of experimented on, which is they use her brain tissue, her uh, mutant gene and everything inside spinal her body tissue, yeah, they... and spinal tissue to make the sentinels which are practically duplicates exactly. of her which they adapt yeah exactly that's what it is because they use her ability to 
adapt, um, well, to morph, to change. Yeah. In these Sentinels, so they can then change, so they'd be ultimate mutant killers. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing, killing them off with one of their own. Now, um, he gets, you know, uh, she's basically saying she's never done it before. The brain tissue is going to basically destroy itself if she tries to send someone back that far. Wolverine says he can do it because his brain can regenerate, which is true. Yeah. Uh, another it's... continuing theory on there, though, is the fact that he has metal claws. Because at the end of the Wolverine, he had those claws t- chopped off and he had bone. But it probably could have been yeah. healed. Yeah. Uh, which uh, we we don't want to go into the whole bullshit of adamantium being heated to chop off adamantium because I remember you and me got into a whole issue about that. Yeah, that's you went um, it's scientifically stupid. Okay. <laughs> very, very. Yeah. But, so, but yeah, we going back to the actually the story itself with the whole um, the the premise of the film is this small group band of, um, is constantly escaping from Sentinels by not being there. Yeah. Um, Xavier, Magneto, and Wolverine come along and say. We know what started it. Um, we know what you can do. Can you send us back, or can you send Xavier back to? I talk to myself and be like, "Hey, what's up? Don't yeah, do because, this." Yeah, because he'll basically try and bring everybody together. Yeah, he couldn't do. They couldn't do that. So they yeah. sent Wolverine back. So exactly, Wolverine, his mind would. Yeah, so she does her little routine on Wolverine. He gets sent back in time, and he wakes up basically uh, in the I, I believe it's the late seventies. Yeah. Uh, And you know, so we just go, after, yeah, it was just after first class. Yeah, so, so we go like into ten, the whole, ten years after first class. So yeah, yeah. late seventies. Yeah, uh, and he, we go into the whole situation where he's for some reason he's in, in bed with a woman. There, there's a funny uh, little story behind this. He, they do a naked rear butt scene where he wakes up and his ass is showing. Yeah, every single one of my female friends was salivating. I'd say yeah. um, ovaries exploding in a the theater. Yeah. Um, but the fun thing about it is he actually mentions this and says that his schlong was a bit too uh, revealing um, so they had to cover it with a green sock <laughs> so they could edit it out in post-production believe it or not um, so that's yeah, that's a little bit typical we'd all say that exactly um, it was nice the thing is it was not, not that but um, it was nice to show his I was sitting ass. there thinking are they going to are they going to mess it up by saying um, like giving him metal claws but they at least stayed consistent and with saying, the bone claws yeah because back in the 70s he'd still have bone claws yeah this is before he went into the whole Weapon X program yeah. uh, assumingly um, but he, he probably it, it, it could have been after his time with Captain America where he was with the, the US uh, the US and sort of the Canadian branches at that time before he joined the Weapon X program. And you know what? And they did remain consistent in times of the film franchise in terms of the film continuation. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're going on to that. Wolverine's doing his thing. Um, th- th- some mobsters come in and said, you're supposed to protect this girl. She's yeah, the boss's daughter. You know, and, instead of doing what you did. And he's like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know who you think of, but I'm not me. Yeah, I didn't do that. Well, technically I did. My younger self did, but I yeah, didn't. But I didn't. Yeah, and it, we go into a bit of a hoo-ha with hilarity in it. And then he goes, oh, you know, you don't want to make this a problem. His claws comes out and he looks at it and he's like, oh, shit, they're bone. Yeah. And then everyone's going to a fight, but he still stabs everybody, tells the guy to give him his car keys. Uh, and I believe he does stab someone in the testicles, doesn't he? I think he does. I think he does stab someone in the testicles. One thing I did like about that... Uh, oh, cuts a dude's hand off as well. One bit I did like about that is um, he was confused and kind of disorientated from the yeah. time travel. Like I've seen too many things where people go back in time and they seem to be okay. It seems to okay. It makes sense. I'm in the sixties now. Yeah. In my own body, it's like no, you you you'd be really confused and like disorientated and like what's going on. And confuddled. I, I I yeah. I know what I was meant to be doing, but this is just really surreal. Yeah. So, which he played well. He yeah. he was genuinely like slightly off put. And he and he kind of looked back and he was like, Oh, I, I kind of remember this in, in a sense because yeah. he's been through so much. Uh, and remember his brain is pretty messed up at this uh, at his yeah. current stage. So he goes in, um and he goes out to seek out Xavier, goes to Xavier's home, bangs on the door. Yeah, that's one thing that um really threw me at the beginning, um, when Xavier said, When you go back, um explain to me and Wolverine's like, No, no, I can you just read my mind. He goes, oh, I didn't have my powers at that point. And we identify the reason why he didn't. Yeah, have it, it does explain why, but that really confused me. I thought there was a massive error. In yeah, that. me as well. It was like there was a big plot hole. 
Um, but in the trailers as well, we saw him walking, so we, we could understand the reason behind that. They took that plot element out of another comic book. Um, in one of the recent storylines, he was walking and he didn't have his powers. And, um, you know, the, the, he didn't have his powers, but he, he regained the ability to walk again. Yeah. Um, so we, we, do, we do sort of touch base on that. It does yeah. come from the comic universe but not at that stage. So uh, Beast opens the door, who looks kind of human, which well, yeah, really made me confused as well. Thing. Yeah. Um, and, and him and, you know, the two of them basically start talking. Um, they're going back and forth. Wolverine sort of like punches him in the face. Yeah. Goes he goes through the door. Trust me, we're going to be good friends one day. Yeah. And then Beast basically turns into all feral mode and, and jumps him. And, and starts, shit Yeah, he beats the living fuck out of him. Uh, to be... Uh, to be fair, the guy who plays Beast is... Uh, what was his name? Um, the actor who plays him. I'm trying to figure out what he is. But he is really, really good. You know, he's He had the character down. He understands who he is. Everybody in this film is very comfortable in their shoes. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So yeah. as we continue, he beats Wolverine up. They're getting into a kerfuffle. They're trying to beat each other up. And then Xavier makes his way in. He's who, walking. And who he looks, looks like, like a fucking hippie. Yeah, well, <laughs> not even just a hippie. He looks like a bum. He yeah. looks like... A homeless man who just wandered in off the street. Basically me. But, uh, but with hair. Yeah, but with, with more hair. And, and not as fat. I'm not... Anyway. Right, so we go into the whole continuation with that. Uh, and we we see the reason what's happened with him. How it's affected him. The, the bullet in his spine um, from Magneto. How he doesn't want to listen to the voices anymore. And how he's basically just given up on his dream. Because everybody that he was associated with. All his friends. All his family every mutant that he's taken in was drafted yeah into because it was during Vietnam yeah and, and we can go we, and previously before that as well you see an army instructor going around uh, you know a sergeant um, trying to find certain men and you yeah, see there was like, what was it six mutants were yeah. taken aside as like a special unit and they were going to be transferred somewhere by yeah. a young is that a young colonel yeah or so you see major. Havoc you see um, Toad Toad yeah, you see a few other mutants as well. There's a guy who has this toxic ability to make you fucking puke. Uh, his ability is just really nasty. You see another dude who's got this sort of a uh, spine face guy. Yeah, yeah. From uh, number three, uh, and, and you've got like a few others That's in there. Some really rubbish power. Yeah. It's like, do you know what you see? What we can do? What can you do? Yeah. It's like what, spikes in your face. Big deal. Yeah, and you see, he's like a blowfish. Yeah. Um. So you see loads of different like mutants. He goes in to get them. He reveals himself to be Mystique, and the guy who who goes in was um, the striker. Striker from the um, but, yeah from Wolverine's um, from X Men Origins Wolverine, but he's played by a younger version. So it's this younger man who's playing him, and he's, he's you know as I said, he, um, you can see the reason behind it. You can see that from there he's trying to wipe these mutants out and and he has yeah, he has he doesn't have the hatred he has in the other films yeah. and in the in the, in like the he's, other genre. he's doing what he's doing for his country yeah, exactly he's a typical soldier following rules but he's listens to the propaganda and he dislikes mutants he hasn't got the hatred and kind of the curiosity to experiment yet he yeah. kind of gets that a little bit later on when yeah. he gets kind of wow these guys can actually do really awesome things yeah so Striker and Trask you find out as well that Striker and Trask are kind of in bed with each other in a sense Trask, yeah uh, that the two char- the two guys are basically working together in order to um, to study these mutants then you find Mystique like cleans house everybody cleans house uh, and I can uh, attest to Jennifer Lawrence she's fucking amazing in this yeah she really does get the whole Mystique way of fighting um, yeah and she has that power literally just yeah style and substance style substance and like flexibility yeah. so and also she has that sort of killer sexiness to her uh, at the same time you know and and I, I think it's kind of anti hunger games in a sense because in the hunger games you she's kind of her character's rather wooden you know you, you expect, expect her to be very emotional but at times she's kind of brick wall and in Twilight this style. yeah in, in this it's more you can see the range of emotions you can see the fact she's torn between trying to do good and basically yeah. doing everything she can because she, she, yeah she's, she's lost yeah uh, she's, she's still, magneto's been put in prison yeah which xavier's uh, given up so she's yeah. she's been drafted by magneto for a couple of years and kind of fed the mentality of the brotherhood yeah and then left to her own devices to interpret however she wants so yeah. she's now kind of going off on a mission by herself and, and yeah and that's the, the big thing here she's become 
uh, somebody who's she's out for revenge and one of the person she's after is Trask because she then goes in she goes into his file room she goes into uh, and this, this is sort of like afterwards after they find out where Magneto is she's going in to investigate this and find out what happened to her friends in the Brotherhood and everybody's been experimented on and yeah, killed all, all of the um, guys from first class yeah like even um What's name? Azazel, um, Emma, who I, I the, the thing that makes me laugh is there's an Emma in X Men Origins who I believe is the White Queen Emma Frost. Yeah, um, should be because she's able to turn herself diamond. Yeah, and there's another Emma in First Class who turns herself diamond as well. So there's also yeah, there's one in Wolverine. Is there? There's a there's an Emma in Wolverine. Yeah, when they're um, escaping. Yeah, Origins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there's there's two different versions of her. So I. It, it kind of one conflicts with the other in a sense and yeah. I know people have just been gun ho trying to use Emma Frost um, and, and yeah, yeah and the Brotherhood in a sense in first class she probably wouldn't have been about by then but the thing is they didn't even just experiment on the Brotherhood it was um, Xavier's guys as well yeah, so, um, um, from first class basically oh. anybody who was drafted into the army or any person who was captured yeah that's exactly um, why Mystique went to the army and freed these soldiers because they were about to be taken kind of away taken yeah. away and experiment what's, what's his name the guy um who can Sonic kind of Havoc no no the guy with his, from his mouth oh Banshee Banshee yeah even they even mentioned Banshee who was not one of the Brotherhood he was just a just a dude yeah he was just a mutant um, um, so you, you go into all this everyone's been experimented on she has a tear in her face and then the receptionist comes in talking to Mr. Trask and then you see her um, you know basically playing the guy who was that the dude from Game of Thrones what's his name um, I can't remember his name but he's He's got yeah. He, he the thing is for his lack of size, he's got a very powerful and very outspoken type of uh, diaphragm in a sense. He can play his characters. He can make them big, make them bold. Yeah. And he is so disgusting and evil in this movie. But so calm and everyday man. Every yeah. Man. He's very content. He's 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 just doing. Now he basically we then switch back to um, Xavier and uh you know um hank and wolverine basically having their conversation um we find out as well because it, it, it does sort of cut back from one scene to the next in a sense yeah they, they're having their conversation wolverine's like kind of begging him and to they, consider. Yeah, xavier goes around and goes and he's like i remember I you, remember you. <laughs> yeah i remember you said two words to me i'm gonna say the same two words to you fuck off yeah and <laughs> It, that that for me made me giggle because it allowed it, it showed that Brian Singer did his homework um, and he did a lot of homework because he went back in my opinion watched every single X movie even the bad ones uh, which you know it takes a lot of effort and uh, he, he did that he brought it in and he managed to reel them in in a sense and um, then you know more character development was actually made because he referenced those movies yeah. oh just before we go any further mm -hmm. um, just from a when near the beginning back when um, it was still kind of Shadowcat and all of the guys um, when Wolverine said like send me back um, they couldn't move because they can't send anyone else back to warn about Sentinels yeah they are trapped in this kind of Buddhist um, kind temple. of temple yeah. In the middle of nowhere. In the it's middle of the hideaway, world. basically. Yeah, but they are trapped there until things are sorted. So keep that in mind. So um, they cannot, even if Sentinels come, they cannot go anywhere. So yeah, this so, isn't like they can escape. Yeah, and, and they, they edit these scenes very uh, sort of aptly in a sense because they always cut back to it. Now, and, then, and there's one thing that she said to Wolverine before he went back as well, which was, you have to stay calm. If you don't stay calm, there's a problem where he may jump back. Yeah, and, um, it, and it may like basically, and he may get better at it. So he's got to stay calm. Um, and the <clears> fact <throat> is, um, w when it's all done, he will jump back to the future. He will jump back to the present from the past. Yeah, and everyone else, the last fifty years wouldn't have happened. Yeah, everything um, would have happened. Only he wouldn't remember the last fifty years and the war and all his friends dying, which kind of sucks. Yeah, because that's his life. Yeah, full stop. But again, it's a good thing as well because he's trying to resolve all these issues. Now, um, going back to to like the, the, the first past. class era, the past. Yeah. Um, so he's trying to, to get Xavier to do it. They were talking about how they're going to do things. Xavier's uh, basically hepped up on this drug that suppresses his powers and gives him his ability to walk again. 
Yeah, uh, Hank, Hank is using the same thing, but Hank is using small doses, so it conceals uh, who he really is. You know, and uh, Xavier's using a huge dose like he's on drugs. Yeah, but you actually see him at one point with the whole wrapped around the arm and the needle in the mouth like a proper heroin addict. Yeah, and, and Mac- James McAvoy uh, is so brilliant in, in a sense because you can see his turmoil, you can see his, the way he's torturing himself as well. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> and a- as we move forward, um, Charles is basically, you know, he's, he's agreed to do it. Wolverine, uh, you know, chews him out in a sense choose him out and just says to him that he's not leaving and that he needs him and that something bad is going to happen so he explains things to Charles Charles decides to to work with him and then they're explaining where Magneto is he's in a holding cell at the bottom of the White House on the Pentagon yeah um, Pentagon many many um, like floors underground yeah Back, they explain it and back during the war there was a metal shortage so they made it all out of concrete and like uh, plastic and glass yeah and that basically uh, he's put down there because he tried he killed the president of the United States yeah, he, he killed JFK yeah he assassinated KFC and they're like how do you know KFC he assassinated a bucket of chicken yeah they're like how do you know that he did it and it's like well the bullet curved so that kind of that's a nice conspiracy theory kind of it was yeah. Magneto doing it nice, nice little tie into actual reality yeah uh, and that's it and that's the thing here as well it, it allows him to give him a bit more story and structure and make him out to be the evil villain uh, because he talks about how the fact Magneto curved the bullet because the bullet curved where the grass knoll was and it hit the president in the, in the, the back of the neck and um, you know we go into that and they're explaining how they're going to get him out and Wolverine says I know a guy yeah I, I know yeah, and this is where they introduce Quicksilver he might be a bit yo- he might be a bit young but he should be alright yeah uh, and the guy playing him my god he fit the profile so well yeah he was hilarious he was it was very well acted he had a great deal of character development and you can tell uh, why he was such a moron in a sense you know he he, he was lashing out and the, you know, the brilliant thing they did with it is they didn't he he added to the story but without you seeing I mean a lot of films would have shown him like when they first arrived they would have shown him sneak out look at the, their driving license um, kind of see it was a rental car and stuff uh, but they didn't show any of that he just said it yeah. and they're like how do you know that when oh, I went out when you were when you first arrived and I've done I've done these things that you've not seen yeah and that's, I know these things that's when they went to see him basically because you have a nice little cutaway shot uh, of them driving up to his house and stuff and, and his mum going oh what's he done now sort of thing yeah because they think he's the, they, they think, think they're the FBI yeah yeah um, and, and you know they they talk to him and they try to explain to him what they what they need doing. Uh, he says fine. You know Pedro's well, like well he's like no, and then they're like you get to steal like you no, get to you break you get to break you get into to break into one like, of the hardest places on like, the planet. Cool. Yeah, yeah well, I'll do it. Um, and it, the great thing is you get to see the process. You get to see how he does it. Yeah. Um, because everything he just speeds through. He wraps this guy up in tape. Yeah, that's quite. Good. There's a point where. Um, he's he's using his speed and a guy gets into the lift um, and he's suddenly in the lift with the guy and then the guy looks at him and he opens up a bit of duct tape and next scene the guy is pinned to the wall with like thousands of layers of duct tape yeah and that's the thing they use their instant. time constructively in this film there is no wasted scenes no wasted mm. there's no wasted um, scenes with dialogue that are not needed or cutaway scenes where they just cut through something for no reason they literally everything has a purpose. Um, even the most pointless stuff has a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he goes in and he's basically uh, going to get Magneto while Wolverine and everybody else is going through the back entrance to go uh, to go through. Xavier's basically can't use his powers, uh, even though Wolverine tells him to. to you know, he's like, oh, "What we're going to do here?" And then Wolverine he's trying to to talk his way out of it, and then Wolverine just ends up beating the crap out of everybody. Yeah, he's like, yeah, well, um, Xavier tries. His Reasoning. normal negotiating yeah. skills. He does his Patrick Stewart thing. Yeah. Like Patrick Stewart does in all his roles, like in Next Gen, um, Star Trek, um, he can basically talk his way out of, I don't know, being raped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really don't want to do that. By a Romulan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So in even in X-Men, he can talk his way out of anything. So the, the play on, he talks to a guard and he tries to talk his way out and he fails miserably, so Wolverine just has to beat the guard up. Yeah. And it, you know, you see these scenes and you you laugh your head off from them uh, because of the fact that he just goes back. Wolverine just like we ain't got time for this. Bam, 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 beats them up. Yeah. Um, 
so they they end up you know going through pretending to be FBI telling everybody to leave uh, while Pedro basically is downstairs yeah. breaks Magni out of his prison that's really good he basically says mind the glass and he basically he puts his hand hands, on the thing yeah. and vibrates it to the point where the glass shatters yeah and then um, it just climbs out and to be honest I'd be buggered there because I've got not I've not got the bo- other body strength he, oh, yeah. just, he just leaped up and just pulled himself up like, like it was nothing Ugh. Um, and then they obviously close them off because they're just like they're trapped yeah and he's like Magneto's like in 20 seconds like 50 armed guards are going to come through there and they're going to shoot us and yeah and like, they've got like guns with rubber bullets yeah he's like let's hope so and then he goes and grabs Magneto at the back of Magneto's head and just holds it for a good 3 or 4 seconds Magneto looks at him and goes what are you doing yeah and he goes oh this is to stop you getting whiplash yeah which is a nice little kind of reality check that yeah. you would your neck would snap back again it's referencing kind of things that you, normally in those circumstances that would happen which is a, again is a good thing it's a nice little positive for this movie um, so he gets him through and then they all outside and then all these guards come down and start basically yeah, getting they, ready to shoot them yeah at this point Wolverine and Xavier meet up as the as the lift comes up they meet so they're all in this kitchen area mm. um Loads of guards come in, pull out their weapons. Um, As expo- Xavier still tries to explain himself. Yeah, like, he's still trying to talk FBI, his way out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, Magneto goes, deal with this, Charles, freeze them. And he's like, I, I can't. Yeah, he's like, I haven't got my powers. And then Magneto decides to use brute force yeah, and, and he... picks up like all these knives and, and freaking cut objects and he's getting ready to like kill these guys. And then and they, they open fire. Yeah, and he's like, "Promise me, you promised me no killing. You know, I'm not going to have it. And then they all open fire. Yeah, exactly. And then... Xavier, you see Xavier come across and put his hand on uh, Magneto's chest. Yeah. A uh, Wolverine's claws start to come out. Yeah. Um, and then everything freezes. You think, oh, it's Xavier. Maybe he's got his powers. Yeah. And next thing you see, it is, cuts um, down. It sort of like pans across the quicksilver. He's, yeah. he's just putting on his things very slowly, kind of just sorting his cuffs out, and, you're, and he kind of just strolls around, just goes for a little jog, and yeah. just like runs on the walls. And yeah. Then, and you can see bits where he moves the bullets. He'll move the knives out of the way. Yeah. Um, he'll do situations where the guards are punching each other in the face. Yeah, it's a very... It's what a, what a teenager would do if he had the ability to move. Very well choreographed. Very and then he well. goes on and he just barely touches a guy in the face and his little ding noise and his cheek ripples a little bit. Yeah, and again, it's beautiful use of CGI on this. Yeah, and like he's running along and he thinks, oh, do you know what? I'll test this little bit of soup that's spilt in the air. And he's like, hmm, this is nice. Please, sir. I want some more. Before we could basically finish, it got sort of an emergency call in. So I'm going to be finishing the review on my own, of course. Uh, Now, back to the movie itself. Now, Quicksilver, as Oliver pointed out, basically went around tasting soup. Everything was more in slow motion, and he was moving kind of the bullets to one side uh, before everybody, everything sort of came back in motion. That was a great way of Brian Singer bringing about the, the character's sort of movements in a sense and showing exactly how Quicksilver himself should have been played now the the, the great thing about that was that um, it allowed him to move around the room in slow motion and everyone could see what what was going on it's kind of like um, saying if you had something like the flash uh, done in real time now as uh, the, as that happens he goes back Wolverine's got kind of his claws coming halfway out uh, Magneto had himself ready sort of to use his powers and, and kill these guys if necessary uh, and Charles was trying to stop everybody at the same time and everything goes back in normal motion bam bam everyone gets hit people are flying bodies everywhere everyone's unconscious uh, and while that's happening they, they manage to escape and, and they look at you know all the damage that, that Pedro has done um, basically for the the foreseeable future the Wolverines all like looking down everyone's puzzled about what's going on and uh, as that happens we then go to the plane uh, where Xavier um, you know uh, Eric and also uh, Logan Wolverine uh, and Beast are going on to to head over to France uh, as they figured out where uh, Trask is basically and also where Mystique is going to be. Now, again, it's kind of iffy about the situation because if uh, it, it, it leaves that, that loophole in, so to speak, of 
if that was the case, she wouldn't have appeared in X1, X2, and X3. But regardless of that, let's let's continue. Now, as, as that happened. <laughs> Uh, there, there's a whole sort of like party going on so we cut to a scene uh, and we see Jennifer Lawrence actually looking like herself very sexy of course as well uh, and um, we, we see basically this uh, this individual who's like a, an army leader who's there and he's who's basically has a purpose but we don't know what that purpose is talking about how they fought off the, the Americans and um, you know how they need to party he's getting drunk and he meets her and she has a very nice grasp of a uh, Vietnamese in a, in a sense and um, she is basically being mystique and, and Ollie has alluded to it earlier uh, how about the fact that she had the movements going on you know Raven pinned him up against the wall when they were alone in the hotel room and choked him out using her one of her foot while she was doing something else at the same time it, it was very impressive uh, and something where I felt like she had a, a huge sort of grasp on, on the character itself uh, in, in terms of who Mystique was and what she was doing, it kind of wasn't like the young naive Raven that we saw previously in First Class. This she was on full on bitch mode. Um, so as this was going on, uh, we then basically cut back to the lads on the plane, you know, having a conversation. Magneto and Xavier get into a huge argument over what he did and how uh, he apparently was responsible for the death of JFK. And who uh, they get into a scuffle the plane is about to sort of collapse on itself because Magneto is getting angry and Charles is, is screaming at him like he's a mass murderer um, as this happens you know uh, Wolverine tries to calm everybody down suddenly cool heads prevail the plane goes back to normal uh, before it collapses in itself Beast is basically panicking and trying to hold on to it and keep cool uh, as Logan's attempting to sort of calm everybody down now um, as that scene sort of progresses we then go on um to the real reason what happened now the the funny thing is they actually then stated that jfk was actually a mutant um and the reason why uh Magneto was put in prison in the first place was because he was trying to stop him from being killed um but they caught him before he was able to stop it because he was trying to move the bullet away before it was shot into his uh, into his head um, so as that that's kind of happened, it was a, it's kind of a nice way to bring history into the whole aspect of it as well. Because as a as a movie buff myself, it's usually nice when they mix uh, comics with reality in a sense and blur those lines. Uh, and that happens. We have a big board meeting. Trask has gone over to the other side after the um, basically the U.S. government has said no, we're not going to give you any funding. We're not going to give you any money. Uh, due to the fact that it's you know we, we don't th we don't believe that these mutants exist and if they do exist they're living uh, on on the, our home turf they're not interrupting anybody not disturbing anyone leave them alone um, so he he goes over to the, the the other side and tries to get these other guys to back his project uh, and he's got this little sort of meter where he tr he can actually tell where the mutants are so to speak it, it actually hones in on the x gene. Um, and then he figures out the mystique's there. She tries to kill him, and the whole incident that actually happened, uh, was mentioned previously, happens. But with an exception, as Charles, uh, Eric, and Logan and Beast all get in there, basically, and and you know stop um, stop her from getting electrocuted. She's being electrocuted, um, and, and like Magneto basically turns it on the other guy. Um, she's, you know, um, he, Charles basically gets Beast to, to beat up all the other uh, the other guards who are there, while everyone else scatters out of the room. Logan basically does his thing, and then suddenly he collapses on the floor. He tries to, he he, he basically goes mad because he figures out that the general that was on the floor um, was the man behind the Weapon X project, who William Stryker basically. Uh, who turned him into who he was? It was a nice paying homage to X Men Origins, of course, because you know it allowed that to be part of canon. He's going a bit ballistic, um, so he goes back into his body in a sense. His brain's jumping back and forth, and his claws pop out. He cuts Kitty. Kitty's basically bleeding to death at this point, uh, as she's trying to keep him stable. Magneto uses his magnetic powers to to keep Logan on the table, and they they basically restrain him. Um, and and you know as as this is going down 
um, Iceman is trying to make sure that she's okay as everything else is is kind of happening uh, at once. Logan's having a seizure. Um, Magneto then turns on everybody and tries to kill Mystique by picking up a gun using his magnetism powers. Um, you know, Beast tries to stop him and he shoots her in the back of the leg anyway uh, as she tries to escape. She falls down. The whole world has covered this. There's an entire coverage here of everything that's going on. Uh, the fight between Magneto, Beast is beating the living pulp out of him, trying to stop him from um, killing her, and he's like holding his neck and basically trying to try and stop him. He's choking to death. Um, well, we think he's choking to death, and, and suddenly he just like, pops back up and, and restrains Beast. Um, you know, uh, Mystique legs it. She gets out of the place. You know, she's, she's fucking out of out of town she morphs into a woman people see it get fucking shocked she morphs into uh, an elderly gentleman afterwards gets out of fucking town while Beast and Magneto are, are fighting Magneto legs it out of their floats um, and this basically gets Trask the, um, the funding that he needs because he goes to the United States government it's all over the media and he proves that these things exist and they could be a threat um, oh, oh by the way shout out to the guy playing Nixon because he was fucking amazing I love when people parody these presents so to speak but he was great he was like oh yeah. um, should I should I know who this is you know, are they on our soil could they hurt us it, it was it was hilarious um, so as that progresses um, we now know that he's got the funding that he needs Magneto basically um, goes out on his own you know that everyone else is giving up Charles goes back to the X mansion uh, and collapses um, because he loses mobility on his legs his powers are coming back he does want to hear the voices he's, we basically find out that he's a broken man here at this point he's um, somebody who <clears throat> basically is off the wolves to live because of the fact that he's seen so much death he's heard so much death he's heard so much pain and suffering from people um, so it, it goes from that to the point where um, Logan, the, the, they kind of reverse their roles. Logan becomes the voice of reason, where Charles is more the erratic young punk, uh, in a sense. And, and they, you know, he's trying, who plays by his own rules, because um, that's hot. But they, they, you know, they go into the the whole thing. He's trying to convince him. Uh, Charles, basically like a drug addict, shoves his needle into his arm. Um, you know, waiting to take a, to more of this experimental drug that will cure his legs and shut off his powers, and then stops, throws it down the floor. You know, um, they realize he, you know, he's like, I need you, I need you fully. Um, and then they basically go to get Cerebro to try and track Mystique. Mystique, then, uh, you know, she's basically got the bullet taken out in a hospital somewhere where she's turned to a human self, so to speak, and. Um, Magneto kind of finds her they have a conversation well he's walking by she tries to stab him with a pen and says if you make these sudden movements I'm going to shove this through your throat explains his actions she says to him you know uh, that she wants vengeance he's saying that all the humans must die and they must pay um, and she you know they've gone and sort of had a back and forth she, this is sort of a very powerful scene in a sense because you can tell she's afraid she doesn't know what she's going to do she doesn't know why she's going to do it or how she's going to do it all she knows is she wants to do something and she wants to do it now uh, and uh, Eric has just basically made his mind up he's turning into uh, the Magneto of old so to speak the guy who just wants to kill everybody so uh, as she goes on her way he goes on his we then cut back to um, Charles at Cerebro you know basically popping this thing on his head tries to to find out everybody all the voices start talking and it explodes um, you know Hank goes to to try and figure it out and get the power working again um, when Charles has another breakdown and, and again McAvoy really had a, a niche in a sense because he was playing a very powerful character here in the young Xavier he, he was playing a powerful character in the sense where he just wasn't the guy that he used to be and he was afraid of that you know he was afraid of that and, and more uh, power to Brian Singer for writing that kind of character in because he had that defeatist attitude so Wolverine said look past me you know you've got to look into my eyes you've got to look past me um, and look deep within me and you'll find something because I can't tell you 
what you need to know I think I need to show you so he he literally goes through his mind and he passes his mind's eye to the point where he can actually go he actually went back in time or what forward in time should I say uh, and is in the room with his other self and he talks there's a great passionate moment between him um, and the, the sort of the modern day Charles Xavier and Patrick Stewart having a conversation about how he feels that he doesn't know if he can cope he doesn't know if he can be that guy you know if he can lead the mutant race in a sense uh, and Patrick Stewart says to him you know that you you have to be strong that it does get better and that there always is another way you know and it's beautiful because seeing these two powerful encompassing figures go head to head in a sense in a, in a battle um, of kind of wisdom and enlightenment you know they he's trying to school him on, in terms of his knowledge and what he's supposed to be doing and how he is a brave and strong person where he just doesn't believe who he is anymore he doesn't believe that he is the guy that everyone else is making him out to be so we move from there that progresses um, you know he realises what he must do Hank turns the power back on and he goes for Cerebro um, as that's happening we then cut to Eric who's basically followed um, all these like these machines you, there's a conversation between Trask and Stryker where Trask talks about Stryker's son who we saw in, in the previous X-Men movies um, that he was he turned out to be a mutant he's talking about how old his son is and that his son needs to be like a, needs to see a better world and they need to fight back against this unknown enemy um, so there's an, a nice sort of bit of character development there with the two of them while Eric basically uh, follows the Sentinels as they're being packed away and shipped. You know, they're, they're basically made by space age metal, so there's nothing in there that his powers can actually use. But there's a brilliant bit where he picks up the railway tracks, bits of metal, and feeds them, he liquefies them, and feeds them into the Sentinels. Um, so he has total control over these things. Uh, it's it, it really puts the power back in his hand as being the lead villain in comparison to Stryker and Trask who were leading uh, their their own sort of bit of vengeance so to speak you know they, they, they were powerful but they were more powerful as being vocal where Magneto was more physical in a sense so we go to that um, Charles then attempts to contact Raven by um, in, in basically inhabiting the bodies of people nearby and explaining to her the situation that she needs to come home she's telling him to leave her alone he's like well you need to understand that you you know that this isn't the way there is another there's always another way she doesn't listen she shakes him off and goes onto her plane he then possesses the mind of the flight attendant and sees the tickets so he knows where she's going she's heading over to a press conference that's happening at the white house now they make their way over there uh, while Magneto basically ends up enabling his plan he lifts uh, there's a bit where he lifts the fucking football stadium and it seems it very Nolan-ish Dark Knight-ish in a sense and a lot of people had an issue with it I didn't too much but it was one of those things where it is kind of he did it so he could trap everybody off so he does this he, he lifts this thing up and he goes flying off with it uh, while this guy's mowing the lawn you see this bit the guy really fucking confused um, while the stadium and everything encompassing it heads over to the White House. You've got Nixon basically letting people know um, that you know there, there's his enemy out there, and he's not going to take any shit from anybody, so to speak. You know that's um, they've got a solution and unveils the Sentinels. Uh, Eric then brings the fucking stadium down while Charles, Logan, and Beast um, actually figure out where she is. He figures out where she is. She's going to basically fire a strike and kill him. He then inhabits her mind, stopping her and trapping her before she does. Um, then they end up in a situation where the Sentinels are go and attack uh, everybody. They get turned by Magneto on the rest of the people. The stadium comes crashing down. Charles is trapped. Uh, Logan basically tries to fight Magneto off. He shoves loads of railings of metal in him, uh, feeds them through his body. It looks really gut-wrenching at the same time. Um, he gets thrown basically into into a river somewhere, or into an ocean somewhere. Um, 
he's basically collapsing and you should hear it, hear the voices sort of go back in his head so to speak you know of, of what he needed to do uh, and and it feels like he's finally at peace because he feels that he's going to die there and then so you see a very emotional moment uh, that Hugh Jackman really um, in, you know represents here he really makes it as powerful as he can just by his single look and it's one of the immediate reasons I love the film medium so much is because you you get that look you know, you you can you can say so much with this than this sometimes, and it's it was brilliant, very powerful. Uh, meanwhile, as that's going on, uh, back in the future, back to the future, um, you have Storm and the others fighting off a huge fleet of Sentinels that have found them. Finally, found them. Kitty's draining blood. She's gonna die. Uh, Iceman basically like freezes up the the front door. Magneto goes outside. Um, you know. To, to fight these things he takes the x-craft throws it at it storm explodes the thing charges bishop bishop starts firing as blink puts the portal up starts kit they start beating all these sentinels out destroying fleets of ships they all come crashing down and everyone thinks they're safe then suddenly bam storm's got a fucking uh sentinel fucking uh, uh arm through her, her stomach Cal Berry was really good in this movie and again it wasn't what she said it's the actions that made her so really good she ends up dying um, then uh, Sunspot like tries to kill them he ends up basically getting destroyed uh, you, you see um, Magneto who's got a fucking bit of metal inside his body uh, gets put through the door by Blink uh, so he can die in peace and tell his friend goodbye it, again a very powerful moment uh, while the rest of them are trying to defend themselves, Bishop gets to uh, blown apart as they overload him with their fucking charge weapons. Uh, everybody's like fucking dying in spades. You, you even see a bit where um, Charles, you know, and, and Eric have their conversation. You see it cuts to Colossus getting pulled apart by two of the Sentinels. It's, it was, it made me feel really sick. You know, it was very visceral at the same time. as very, and you could see. Uh, the torment in his eyes as he was being killed uh, everyone's being wiped out blink were, was even stabbed S you know everyone's just out uh, then they make their way to the door as logan I I is fuck they don't know you know it seems like all hope is lost in a sense then suddenly um they the president everybody go down to a bunker and mystique's down there with them she finally has her chance she finally has her opportunity to kill striker eric pulls the bunker out brings it down she's in there everyone's going fucking uh, going nuts at the moment the fact that she's in there um, you know Trask and Stryker are going fucking mad and then suddenly Eric basically says he wants the President of the United States and he turns the cameras to himself as he does and says that he's going to basically just you know show the people that mutants need to be feared and the reason why they need to be feared is because he's going to show affirmative action of what you know of what he's going to do um and the president comes out but it's not him you know nixon's in there uh and the other nixon's got fucking balls of steel coming out there and explains to eric you know take me take me leave everybody else and, and his security is trying to hold on to him and he gets them away from him to leave him alone and he stands there and Eric basically is getting ready to kill him. Charles is fucking sketch. You know, looks like he's gonna fucking die. Um, the beast is in a fucking car, being dealt with by a sentinel. Who uh, Magneto basically told him to do what he's been programmed to do and kill the mutant. Uh, and who then tries to turn on him, and he just tears it apart uh, using his powers. Um, and then smiles and smirks that he's gonna kill Nixon. And suddenly bullet through the fucking throat and it was a uh, and you see Nixon just standing there this plastic gun the bullet as Iceman everybody's being destroyed in the future as the Sentinel's ready to kill Xavier Logan and um, to kill Kitty everything disappears cuts back to the past you, you see like uh, um, Mystique standing there changing from Nixon and he goes to a raven I thought you were a better shot than this and she goes I am and Eric looks at Charles you know he, he pulls every all the, the fucking um, like guarding and everything off of Charles uh, so that Charles can sort of crawl out and says 
you know if they capture me I'm dead man so they let him go he flies off Beast holds on to Charles Raven stands there and then literally you cut to from there um, where she's basically he says to her you know to come home she's telling him no and she walks off and ev and then you have this whole huge speech Wolverine's lying there uh, it, it cuts back to him in the water the guardings he, he go he gets put onto this boat by Stryker um, or who we think is Stryker and all these guard rails are coming out of his chest and his body and um, you know he basically it turns out he's mystique in disguise while he's laying there and, and the one the one of the things that he said to, to Charles was before you know all this happened was to find me find Scott find Jean find everybody bring us all together because that's going to be your purpose to bring the X-Men about and it, it's it's a really powerful moment that they had so keep that in mind you know as we go on um, he's being fished out the big speech is happening mutants have been cleared um, you know and, and been told that they're not this big threat that everybody else made him out to be as you see this little tidbit in the paper that uh, Trask has been um, basically uh, held in custody over like selling secrets to, to the America's enemies uh, in a sense and everything disappears Logan wakes up in his body in recent time but it's not where you think he was supposed to be as he wakes up everything's groggy there's a clock there next to him and you can see all this like sort of new age newfangled technology and he's walking around and everything looks unfamiliar the great thing about it is you see Kelsey Grammer walk past him as Beast going hey Logan like that it was, it was so I, I, I was giddy in a sense and I was kind of teary as well at the same time uh, watching all these guys sort of interact with one another um, you, you see you know everybody in the school all the regular characters all the X-Men there and he sees Jean and he's like Jean you know he, he runs up to her um, he's going to go and touch her and then you see, you see Scott's arm go hey there pal brings him over and he's and he sees him he's like oh hey buddy like that and pats him on the back um, they literally rebooted the whole canon and got rid of the the movies that were done beforehand in order to bring this new story into effect and they just rebooted the universe it was such a way to do it and he looks on and he runs into he, he goes past them and you see Charles Xavier there at the desk and he's like he looks at him and he goes are you okay Logan you've got a class to teach he goes I teach and there's a beautiful moment there where he's like um, you look confused he's like well you know I I need like to, to find out what happened in the last 70 years and he looks at him and he goes oh and it's like he's interacting with McAvoy's Xavier in a sense um, and the two of them are talking and he has to keep getting up to scratch on what the hell happened and it's a beautiful moment and we cut away uh, between it and everything's been resolved um, it's it's amazing it, I, I literally had I, I, I had a nerdgasm in a sense to the point where I, I couldn't believe what I just watched you know it was a beautiful story beautiful characterizations there's nice there is a nice little um bonus bit at the end but i'm not going to tell you guys about it you have to go to the cinema to watch it or wait for the dvd uh now with the story out and, and done let's now go on to the acting because as you know with movie file the, the famous thing about the show is we'd like to look at the acting and the characterizations now if you look at this story the story is more about mystique and her reuniting with her family in the sense of making a choice. Raven, portray portrayed by Jennifer Lawrence, fucking amazing. I mean, to the point where, <clears throat> with any character she's ever played, looked like garbage. Uh, apart from the Silver Lines playbook, that, that film has... It's one of those things that really... I, I still love to this day. Um, she can act. She sh knows that she can act. And th there's only a few roles that manage to bring her out of her shell and allow her to be the character that she wants to be this was one of them um, 
she was amazing you know very visceral you could see you could realize her struggle everyone was you know um uh, of course Hugh Jackman as Wolverine uh I know it's up in the air at the moment uh, I believe there is a rumor going around that he signed a four picture deal fabulous but we don't know um if that's going to happen or not hopefully it is uh again amazing you know he he is the role uh and it's not like uh Iron Man is Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark is uh, the character that Robert Downey Jr. happens to play it's the other way around he really made Wolverine who Wolverine is um, the the rest of, of the characters as well seen cameos of the other X-Men it was brilliant you know I, I loved it when I saw um, you know everybody including Kelsey Grammer in this movie all the original X-Men back um, to see the uh, McAvoy as Charles you see his personal struggle was fucking amazing he went toe to toe uh, in my opinion and was a breakout star in this movie uh, Michael Fassbender as Magneto always fucking amazing in, in terms of the way he played his character played it really really well and it's a shame that they can't make this canon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe because in my opinion it probably was and a lot of people are going to hate me for this a lot better than uh, the Avengers movie I felt like it had story, it had structure, it had character, it had everything that you'd want in a movie. And yes, there were some errors. There was a load of continuity errors in there as well, uh, and a load of issues that I had, but I didn't care. And, and I'll tell you the reason why I didn't care, because of the fact that I felt the movie spoke for itself. And this is how you write a movie, this is how you direct a movie, and this is how you act in a movie. You, everything has a balance and I think the balance was beautiful it was perfection the cinematography amazing the writing beautiful the characterizations the way that these characters were played everybody was safe in their own skin they knew what they were doing and what their roles were they knew what their motivation was and they knew exactly who they were playing and who they were they knew exactly what thoughts these guys were thinking and what they needed to do next um so yeah moving on from that let's go on to the score now you always know that I do a 1 out of 5 1 being the worst and 5 being the best of course and I give this movie a 4 I know I see people like oh but you, you know you and Oliver sat here for the last uh, 20 or 30 minutes telling us how amazing this movie is but you gave it a 4 and the reason being I can't ignore those errors uh, this is the thing if you wanted it to get a solid five, it, they should have made sure that they told us. They made us understand for the dumb people in the audience, for the people who don't read the comic books, who aren't comic book fans, you need to let them know exactly what's going on. All of it. How comes Kitty's got these new fangled powers? How comes Raven uh, was killed after she killed Trask? When did this happen? How did this happen? Who did it? Who, what, where, when, and why? That's the literal thing here. And I couldn't ignore it, otherwise I wouldn't be a good film reviewer to you guys and say, yeah, it's a five, you know, it's amazing. Those were still there. They're still apparent, but they do not hinder the movie. So I give it a nice four out of five. What's your review? Do you agree? Do you disagree? And do you feel that I'm right uh, or wrong or eh, somewhere in between? Uh, let us know, guys, by leaving a comment at the bottom, likey, subscribing, all those other little bits and pieces, and get prepared to see another movie file next week. And next week, I'm going to be doing the movie Godzilla. You don't want to miss this one, guys, because I'm the only person in the world who didn't like that movie. So uh, wait to see that, guys. More spoilers for you guys as well. And if you do um, check out my future reviews, go back, check out season one of Movie File, and uh, I will see you again for episode two of Movie File. And as always, guys, see you at the movies. Dark side. Two. Oh. One. Zero.